So let's put our hands together and make some noise for Pastor Lady and the Pastor. Praise, praise God. Praise God. Okay, I'm sure you guys are hearing me. Good morning, church. Good morning, Pastor K. Good morning, Pastor Mrs. Odushote, and good morning, everybody in the house. Okay, so the topic before us, and uh, we have been looking at that through the month, is the anointing. Even though we have been using different um, topics and different, and your pastor has been creative in the approach, but definitely what we're going to be looking at is the anointing this morning. I think we should just have a word of prayers together. And so, our Father, we want to thank you so much this morning for the privilege you have given to us to always learn of you. Your word says that, and all your children shall be taught of the Lord, and great shall be your peace. We want to learn of you. We want to learn of Jesus. Those things that are exclusively Christ and pertain to your kingdom, Spirit of God, the anointing, the Holy One, we ask that your presence will be made manifest. You will help me to communicate God's word and you will help your people also to receive the same. Take the things of Christ and show it to us that we may be in accurate alignment with all that God is doing on earth so that we can function as your servant in different capacities, in different aspects of our lives and glorify you in all things and bring fruit to your kingdom. Thank you, Father Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise God. Okay. So, we are still looking at um, the anointing. Okay. Let me start by saying that, uh, generally speaking, there are two wills on the earth. There are two wills. There are two purposes or pleasures on the earth. There is that which is God's and there is that which is man's. In the sense that generally God has made it possible that even without man's submission to him in his will, you know, in that which pertains to its our desire, God has made it possible that man can still prosper and do so well. But there is also that which is exclusively God's, in which God longs to execute his pleasure on earth. You know, Jesus said, pray that his will will be done on earth as, his, as it is done in heaven. When Jesus came to this world, he said, I have come down, you know, I came down from heaven to earth to do all his will. Now look at it, uh, John and chapter 6, John and chapter 6 and verse 38, I guess, John six thirty-eight. Look at what he says. He said, For I came down from heaven not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. So there is such a thing as the will of him that sent Jesus. So Jesus did not come to this earth, to this world, to do his own bidding, but his father's. So there is such a thing as the will of God on earth. Okay, so generally speaking, there is such a thing as the will of God, the purpose of God, the pleasure of God. Now, for God to do his will on earth, to do his work, to cause his purpose, his pleasure to be done on earth, to prosper. One singular thing or the person that caused this to be done on earth is the anointing. Or the person of the Spirit of God. If you read Genesis and chapter 1, verses 1, verse from verse 1, the Bible says, In the beginning, God created everything, made, the, made heaven and earth, and that the earth was without form and void. And the Bible tells us that the Spirit of God began to move on the surface of the deep. Now, that Spirit of God is the anointing. So, you see, for God's purpose, for God's will to be done on earth, such is being done by the anointing. So, when we talk of the anointing, sometimes, exclusively, we are referring to the person of the Spirit of God. Sometimes, the anointing in the scripture is exclusive, and we are talking about the person of the Spirit of God. Now, quickly come with me to First John. And chapter 2, 
First John chapter two. Let's look at it and verse um, uh, verse. Let's maybe we should look at verse twenty seven. But the anointing which you have received of him abideth in you. The anointing which we have received of him abideth in you. Now, this anointing is a person here. Is the person of the Spirit of God. The third person of God Godhead. And you need not that any man teach you. But as the same anointing teacheth you all things, and is truth, and is no lie, even as it hath taught you, you shall abide in him. A definite person. So sometimes when we talk of the anointing, we're talking about the person of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, the third person of Godhead. Now again, sometimes when we talk of the anointing, we're talking about that ability or that which the Holy Spirit conveys. It can mean the power, it can mean wisdom, it can mean ability that the Spirit of God exerts on, on people or on special people. So we talk of the anointing, we're talking about the person or the means by which God is, you know, is getting his purpose, his will, his pleasure done on earth. And through the anointing, special graces, and by that graces, I'm talking about power, I'm talking about wisdom, knowledge, abilities, are, you know, are made possible, are conveyed to certain people on earth. So the anointing is the person of the Holy Ghost or the abilities, power, wisdom conveyed by him to God, you know, to his people through which God is getting his will done on earth. Now, because of the time before us, we're not going to do broad teaching. I'm really going to do a lot of, you know, I'm going to compress a lot of things because we have so much to talk about. And then because, you, you know, our pastor also has taught us so much since the beginning of the month. I believe that many things are no more new to us. We've learned so much as to the Holy Spirit within us, Holy Spirit communicating the things of Christ and then leading us, guiding us, we, all of us, discerning his voice, the spirit of sonship and the rest that we have been taught. Now, in the Old Testament, God, you know, get his word done by anointing or coming or the Spirit of God coming on special people or on certain people. Now, certain materials have been used, oil, you know, structures has been used to convey or to you know to almost look like what you use as something to convey the you know to convey or to represent the anointing for instance in the time of moses there is what he called the anointing oil that was specially constituted and it was never done after that of moses and even in the new testament we see see oil that is being used but in the time of moses it was a special oil that was being constituted you know that was being composed to use to anoint people and of course that is just a representation and then the holy spirit eventually came upon such a people now let's quickly run through certain people or certain individual that we have seen it can be through certain certain individuals kings prophets judges you understand and then uh, uh, uh you know certain individuals that the anointing came upon for instance, we remember when the uh, when the, uh, the tabernacle was to be built, and a, a lot of certain works were to be done, and the work is going to be technical, and it takes a lot of skill. In fact, the expertise that was needed to do such to do such work is beyond this world, and so God had to specially anoint certain people with His Spirit in order to get His work done, and so we saw it in Exodus chapter. 31 we saw this guy anointed bezalel now let's look look at it bezalel was specially anointed exodus 31 we will see the implication of all this in the new testament look at it exodus 31 and from verse 2 see i have called by name bezalel the son of uri the son of all and of the tribe of judah verse 3 and have filled him with the spirit of God in wisdom. So he was specially graced with wisdom and in understanding and in knowledge and in all manner of workmanship 
to devise cunning works to work in gold and in silver and brass. Now, this guy did not specially have any special physical natural training to get this skill. Even though he had some of this, but God had to powerfully and supernaturally God is, you know, God is what done through, you know, by anointing this guy with the spirit, you know, with his spirit so that his work could be done. Now you can also read Exodus 35, 30 to 31. You see, see there God still talking about how the, you know, the work was done through Bezalel and certain guys. Okay. Now let's quickly look at it. Exodus 3530. Okay, and Moses said unto the children of Israel, See, the Lord has called by name Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Od, of the tribe of Judah, and has filled it with the spirit of wisdom. And again, talk about what God said earlier. So we saw this guy, you know, Bezalel and his companions, how they were specially anointed to get God's work done. So, again, let me say it again. God is getting his work done on earth, his pleasure done on earth, his will executed through the anointing, through the person of the Spirit of God. You see, you cannot do God's work without God's empowerment. God had to specially empower you. Otherwise, otherwise it is not God's work you have done. It is not by power. Nor by mind are we going to do God's work. It is only by the anointing. By my spirit, he said in Zechariah chapter 4. Okay, then we see God anointing certain people, you know, judges in the Bible. Example, Samson. Now look at it. Samson, Judges 14. Judges 14. The same spirit coming in different dimensions. We saw him, you know, you know, giving wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and all manner of skill to get his work done as far as Bezalel was concerned. But as far as Samuel was concerned, it wasn't much of wisdom. It wasn't much of knowledge. It's the Holy Spirit came upon him to anoint him and, he, you, know, to, you know, with physical strength. Samuel, you know, Samson will come up with physical strength. It has nothing to do with his muscle power. It has nothing to do with his body, body physique. It has to do with the anointing. Anointing. That when you look at Samson, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't even stand to reason that such a man could get this kind of work done. How can you pull the gates down? How can you get this down? You even despise him, you know. You can even despise him to think that, he, you know, such a feat cannot be done by him. And physically speaking, it was practically impossible. But through the anointing, we saw Samson doing beyond or going beyond himself. Now look at it, Judges fourteen six. We we'll just look at one or two, how we found that the Spirit of God was the one that did it. Verse 6, And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him, and he rent him as he would have rent a kid. Now, this is what something, renting a lion, tearing lion in pieces, all because the Spirit of God came upon him. Now, you know, something was specially called anointed to begin to deliver the God's people from the hand of the Philistine. At this time, Israel was under the oppression of the Philistines. And so God had to specially anointed, you know, specially grace this servant of ease to get this work done. Now, Samson has his shortcomings, he has his own character flaw, but it doesn't mean that God did not use him despite that. Okay, so we see it, and he rent him, I will do this kid, and he had nothing in his hand, but he told his father and mo his mother what he had, he told not his father and mother what he has done. So we saw the anointing coming mightily upon Samson, and Samson did, you know, mighty exploit. Look at it, verse 19 again, and the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, and he went down to Ashkelon, and slew 30 men, 30 men of them, and took their spoil, and gave you know, change of garment into, you know, to them, which expounded the riddle. Okay, again, we saw how Samuel or Samson, you know, dealt with 30 men. Again, we can read all the story of Samson, the foxes, you know, I pulled down gate and the list continue. Then we saw God anointed kings in Israel. The first king in Israel that was anointed was King Saul to get his work done again, to govern his people, to provide good leadership for his people. Of course, Sam, you know, we saw that if you read the story, Samuel misused the position. He misused the anointing. Then we saw prophet. I don't 
want to go much into that. We saw certain prophets, you know, even with Abraham, Moses. We actually saw that when Moses was leaving the ministry, when he was to leave the world, he had to pass the anointing upon him and transfer the same, you know, to Joshua under the instruction of, you know, of the Spirit of God. And then, so we saw that in the Old Testament, the work of God was done by the anointing. Elijah was heavily anointed. Elisha also received the same anointing from Elisha when he passed it on, on him. So we saw that in the Old Testament, these were ordinary men. These were men of like passion, like you and I. But what distinguished them was the anointing. And they were not anointed for themselves. It's not because they were special. It's not because there's something contingent in themselves. It's because because God wanted his work to be done and he chose these people and it's because they were chosen, they, were, they became special and anointing came upon them to get in God's work done. Okay, so throughout the Old Testament, we saw God's work being done by the word anointing that he released on all these men. Now, in the New Testament, God is still, cause, you know, he's still doing his work, he's still causing his work to be done through the anointing right from the beginning you know when jesus was to be born of course that was still part of the old testament strictly speaking because new testament began at the resurrection of jesus of course the bible tells us that every testament is not in force until the death of the testator okay so jesus you know new testament strictly speaking began at the death of jesus the only thing is that jesus resurrected to enforce his own testament and that is what makes his testament Testament to be unique. Okay, so we saw that that began when the spirit, you know, the angel appeared to uh, to uh, 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 Mary and told her that she's going to conceive. And Mary said, "How is it going to be? How is this going to happen? Since I knew no no man." And the angel told her, "Don't worry. The spirit of God is going to come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you." So we saw that you know Jesus's conception was supernatural, and it was at the instance of the anointing. The spirit of God came mightily upon mary and that led to the conception of jesus so the birth of jesus was a supernatural one god bypassed the natural process that he himself has put in place and he used it by the anointing we saw the conception of jesus in fact when the same jesus began to grow the bible told us that jesus was filled with the anointing the anointing was on jesus to get god's work done on earth eventually the bible tells us in acts 10 35 how god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy ghost so the fullness of the person of the holy spirit was upon jesus he did not receive the anointing or the person of the holy spirit in measure it was the fullness of the spirit of god that was upon jesus to get god's work done on earth okay now in the new testament when we talk of the anointing strictly speaking there are three dimensions of the operation of the anointing of course we have been told those things but i just want to run through them now there is the anointing that comes to resident in on the inside of us as sons of god the spirit of god the anointing has come to take residence on the inside of you and that is the spirit of sonship now that's the spirit of god in this capacity never leaves us he has come to take residence on the inside of you you have received him because you have the son of god galatians chapter 4 verse 6 galatians and chapter 4 and verse 6 and look at it and because you are sons you have become children of god you are sons god has sent for us the spirit of his son, the same spirit that was in Jesus has come to take residence on the inside of you. Any wonder the Bible says you are the temple of the spirit of God. We have now become mobile temple. That place of our gathering, this place of our gathering is not the temple of God. You are, you and I, we are the temple of God. The spirit of God re take residence on the inside of you. And so you have become the mobile holy temple temple of god that's why you cannot use your body anyhow you can't give your body to fornication to anything you must follow the protocol you understand whereby you are in accurate allegiance and the reverence of god is constantly is your you know is your constant pursuit okay now look at it again first corinthians and chapter 2 i want to believe that you you know we are learning one or two things here this morning 
You know, we are here to learn. We are here to be taught of God. And it is in sound teaching that we can have sound, you know, sound life. It is orthodoxy, correct doctrine that can give back to orthopraxy, that we can live right and live well. First Corinthians and chapter 2, verse 12. Now, now we have received not the spirit of the world. So you have not received the anointing or the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God. You have received the spirit of God, the spirit of the living God. You have received. And that's what makes you to be sons of God. We have his nature, you know, communicated to us in our heart by the Holy Spirit that we might know the things that are freely given to us. So it is the spirit of God that is going to help us to know. Jesus said when he was departing, he was told his disciples, I have many things to teach you to you know to come you know to communicate to you but you can't handle them but however when i leave i will send forth another comforter another you know exactly like me the paraclete allos paraclete i'm going to send the holy spirit to you and he will take of mine and he will show you to you he will teach you all things he will make all things known to you he will communicate what i can't communicate to you now because it can't come from the external inward it must be inward out he will bring everything is the spirit of sonship and it is in the fulfillment of the prophecy of ezekiel when you read ezekiel 36 26 he said and i will give you a new heart i will remove the stony heart and i will implant in you my spirit my anointing my presence will be communicated to you so you are now going to be children of the living god okay so we have received the anointing now verse 13 which things also we speak not as the words which you know we speak in human wisdom so we have received the anointing to give to communicate to us the things of god you know for these things are not taught in our any university you can't know them by natural knowledge it takes the supernatural enabling or you know empowerment or the oppression of the spirit of god for us to know this and this is what makes christianity not just to be a casual living is a supernatural life and for every one of us who are christian and those of us that god is going to touch the anointing of the spirit of god is going to touch you today listen a new journey is beginning in your life you see christianity is a supernatural thing is a supernatural calling it has nothing to do with the dreams the ambitions and the drive of this world it is not about you and it is not for you it is not because god wants your life to be better and so that you can have the good things of this life you can have all that without having the anointing the anointing is not to give you the good things of this life. That's not what it's for. The anointing is for the pleasure of God to be done on earth. The reason why you want to discern the voice of God, where you must be keen as to hearing God, knowing God for yourself, is so that you want, you want to be on the same page with God. You don't want to use your life for the things that will not have approval before God, so that God will not tell of you, you are unfaithful servant. You really want to live your life accurately before God and you want to really be circumspect and the only way you can do this is to yield to the spirit of God who is going to communicate the things of God to you you remember Jesus when he was here he said I can of my own self do nothing I can only do it through the anointing whatsoever I see my father do that's what I do and do you know whatever I saw his father do it was the anointing the spirit of God that communicated all such to him and in the same vein jesus has given us the same spirit sent him to us and we have received him in our heart as god's own children now let's look at last scripture in this and then we move on to the next first john we have read this before let's read it again first john and chapter two we're still looking at the anointing the anointing coming upon mortals coming upon ordinary men turning ordinary men to men that you wonder how did how could they get such feet done impossible feet are being done through their hands all because of the anointing it's not by power it's not because we are naturally intelligent it's not because we have the skill in ourselves it's not because we have any natural advantage but the anointing is the advantage the anointing and that's why there can be no boasting that's why we can't take no credit to nothing because it is not of us it is of him so all thanks and glory 
and adoration must go to the one who has given us this. It's a great privilege that you and I must not take for granted. Now look at it, First John 2 and verse 20. But you have the unction, for you have an unction from the Holy One. The unction here is the anointing. It's another word for anointing. You have an unction or anointing from the Holy One. And you know all things. See it? You know. This kind of knowing is more than mental knowledge. It's like an intercourse. It's like having intercourse, you know, deeper than just mental knowledge, you know, and you know all things, all things that pertains to the will of God, all things that pertains to God's cause on earth. You know it. The anointing is going to teach you. You are going to know all things. Now look at it, verse 27. 27, now we've read it before. But the anointing which you have received, the same thing which you have received, abided in you. So we have the anointing resident on the inside of us as individual. Now the beautiful thing is that even though all of us have the anointing, that's objective, the same anointing. But you see, depending on how we yield in our fellowship, in knowing him, in fellowshipping with God, in prayers, in study, in learning, in listening to sound message, you see, the anointing, you know, you come into experiential knowledge. You are more yielded to him. You are more conscious. You are more sensitive to the presence of the anointing on the inside of you. But the anointing which you have received abided in you. And you need not that any man teach you. But at the same anointing teacheth you you know things and it's true and no lie even as he has taught you so shall you abide what is he saying somebody says so that i don't need to listen to any man of god no that's not what he's talking about he's talking about two things here you see as i'm teaching you this morning as your pastor have taught you throughout the week or throughout the month what we're saying that what we have taught you their objective truth is the same we have taught all of you when you listen to message any message is objective truth you are listening to but you see out of the objective truth, the anointing take that, you know, sum and imp imprints that into you and make it specific to you. And that is what gives all of us different experiences. But you see, all our experiences must be subject to the unique experience of the objective truth. On the basis of our individual receivings, that is the subjective working of the Spirit of God. For instance, whom are you going to marry? A fellow Christian like you. But who is that person? What is his name? What is his shape? You don't know. That varies. But the person must be a Christian. That is objective to all of us. All of us fellow Christians, the Bible says only in the Lord. 1 Corinthians 7. The Bible says she is free to marry whomsoever she wills only in the Lord. But who is this person? The anointing leads you into that. And that is subjective, unique to you. So, in the multitude of the objective, the anointing passes to you the ob subjective. And that's what he said. But as the same anointing teaches you all things, and it's true, and it's no lie, it teaches you unique. For instance, the anointing can tell you to give specifically and you must obey. So what you have done is not just giving, you have, it's obedience you carried out. The anointing can tell you to fast, even though you are instructed to fast generally. But it can come to you for a period and say, and he instruct you to do this. So we have that specific instruction. The anointing, for instance, can tell you to stop taking this kind of food. For instance, to, take, to stop doing this. Now, that is specific and you must be ready to listen and to abide in that specific instruction. And whatever the anointing or the Spirit of God has told you that is specific, you don't transfer that to other believers or make it generic. You understand? We don't do that. That will become witchcraft. Okay, so that's the first one, the anointing within you, that's the spirit of sonship, that's the anointing that teaches you all things, that's the, the one that leads you, that guides you, you know, that instructs you, that makes the Christian life unique in your own personal experience. In fact, it is on the basis of this that we live powerfully, the character, the fruit of the spirit emerges on the ins, you know, that is found in our life. That's the first one. The second one that I will talk about is the anointing with us. The anointing with us. Now, in this church, in the minor's place, an integrity worship center, general, you know, at large, there's an anointing. There's a measure of the Spirit of God that is in operation in this church. Anointing with us. And you see, this is called the corporate anointing. Anointing with us. It's different from you as an individual. Jesus said, when two, of, when two, or, two or three of you gather together in my name, there I am. His presence is what is enacted 
acted by the anointing. Is the spirit of God that convey that presence, and is that spirit that leads that guide, and it's under that that we all of us do the same. For instance, on the basis of the anointing that your pastor perceive, he can tell you that we are going on a fast. You cannot say I'm not going to do it because you know that will be disobedient because that's no more individual. That's a corporate thing. We have made a decision that this is what we want to do. See, when those guys gather in Acts 15 when certain were disturbing the church that they must go into uh, circumcision and uh, Judaism. And Paul did not find it funny, take it lightly with them. They had to gather themselves and go to Jerusalem. But you see, after much argument as to circumcision, no circumcision, they came to a conclusion. And see what they said. They said, for it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and, and then to us. So they saw in their meeting that there was the presence of the Spirit of God. So in our gathering, there is that corporate, you know, presence of the Spirit of God, the anointing with us. The the Bible tells us in Psalm 133, it says, How good and pleasant for brethren to dwell together in unity. The Bible tells us that in such a place, God commanded his blessing. And I began to describe it that it's like the anointing upon Aaron that, you know, that drops down and drip and consume his whole body. So we have such an anointing, the presence of the Spirit of God that consummates us. Now hear me. How heavy the presence of the Spirit of God would be in our midst has to do with all our yieldedness. Many a time, many of us think it's just the responsibility of the pastor to do the work. You know, he's the only one praying. We are just here to hear. No, the anointing will not be heavy in your midst. If you want the anointing to be heavy in our midst, all of us must really be conscious of the anointing. How well all of us are yielding ourselves to in personal prayers, personal study, you know, obedience, practice. Then when we come together, his presence can really be heavy. And I want to challenge all of us. It is not enough that you just live the Christian life when we come together, you understand, and then we just enjoy ourselves. It's more than that. Your personal life, your personal yieldedness to God matters, and it really can contribute. You know, we are all creating an atmosphere for the building of the house of God. That's what he said in Ephesians chapter 2. God is building his house, and you and I will form that corporate presence you know, the presence of the Spirit of God. Now, let's look at one or two scriptures in the New Testament. Acts 13. Acts 13. And then we now zero in on anointing upon us. And that's why I'll just spend my time to dwell. And I'm going to charge you this morning. You see, you are not going to remain the same. You are never going to remain the same. You are never going. Because God is not going to leave you the same. You must be fruitful. You can't afford to be a fruitless Christian. You are not a space-occupying lesion. You are not just to be here to occupy space. God saved you for his pleasure. And you must be fruitful. The investment of heaven is upon your life. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 1 says, We are not going to receive the grace of God, the anointing of God in vain. We are not going to. No. The investment of heaven. And God won't return on his investment. The anointing of God is God's investment. And you are going to give account to that anointing. Okay, now look at it, Acts and chapter 13, from verse 1. Now, there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets, you see it, and teachers as Barnabas, and Simeon that was called Mega, and Lucius of Cyrene, and Manin, which had been brought up with the Herod, the, with Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. As they ministered to the Lord, so they were watch, ministering to the Lord in prayers, in worship, and fasted. What a discipline. Let me say this. If we are really going to flow in the consciousness of the Spirit of God in the anointing, brethren, from time to time, you've got to fast individually and corporately as a minister to the Lord in prayers. One of the ways we minister to God is to pray a lot, to do a lot of praying in worship and in prayers. And the Holy Ghost said, see the anointing. That's the Lord of the church. This is the Lord of the harvest. This is the head of the church today. You know, standing in for Jesus. is the one here, you understand, administering the church of God. The Holy Ghost said, separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. Now hear me, when you, I'll get there, don't let me jump. So he said, separate me, Paul and Barnabas. This is special assignment. This is special anointing to come upon Barnabas and Saul here. 
And when they had fasted, see, they first fasted to minister to to minister to the Holy Ghost, when the Spirit of God now spoke, they you know they conducted another fasting in order to consecrate these people for this work, in order to pray for them. And when they had fasted and prayed, they lay hands on them and sent them away. You see it? See the discipline of the early church. See, let me say this, brethren. I don't care what the world has become. You cannot hasten or shorten the things of God. The same discipline they needed in their time, we need today. The same discipline, the same ruggedness. If they prayed and fasted, we are going to do the same. If see, if they spend time in the word of God, we are going to spend time. 30 minutes message every Sunday cannot grow you. You need doggedness. Sunday, Sunday is not alone. You need to listen to the message again. Pastor K has taught a lot of series. Beautiful, powerful. How many of us has gone back to listen to them again? You can't grow in the power of the anointing. In what? In the effectiveness under the leadership of the Spirit of God if you are not dogged. God reward those who diligently seek Him. Let me tell you this. Do you know, even back here, all the messages of your pastor, I've listened to everything he taught this year, not once. I'll be current listening and I will listen again. And I think to some extent, I know more than many of you. But I will still, because I'm a learner. I'm a learner. I want to know God. I don't know about you. But do you know, all of us are easily distracted. You have time for social media. You have time for things that add nothing to your life. The main thing that happened to us for the reason of our existence, we pay little time. Brethren, to know God is a lot of hard work. To be anointed and to, f to walk in the anointing, to walk in the consciousness and in the fullness of the Spirit of God, to be filled with Him is a lot of hard work. You must work out your salvation. You must give in to spiritual disciplines that brings that causes your you know your inner man to be more, to be conscious and your mind to be flooded with the truth of the person of Christ. Okay, so the Bible tells us that they ministered and then they you you know they ministered and then they pray for this guy. So that is a corporate anointing, the anointing with them that we saw. Now let's look at the last one there. Acts 15, I think I've mentioned it before, but let's quickly look at it. Then we go into the last lap of the message. 15, 28. Now look at it, where they, have, they met. Verse 28. For it seemed good to the Holy Ghost. That's the head. They were conscious of the person of the Holy Ghost, the anointing in their midst. And to us, to lay upon you no greater burden than, the, than these necessary things. But what I'm bringing out here is that there is that person of the Holy Spirit with them. The Bible says, I he will be with you. With you here is with the church. Is a corporate presence. Is the presence of the Holy Spirit. And do you know something? There is a corporate presence of the Spirit of God with the global church. Of course, there is also that presence of the Spirit of God with our local churches. But the Spirit of God is upon the body of Christ and is upon the local churches of God. It is the Spirit of God that is administering and that is taking the lead role, the lead role of the church today. Now, lastly now, the anointing upon. And this is what I've really been sad with to, to, to bring to us, the anointing upon us. Just a minute. Okay. So the anointing upon us. Okay. Now this is the anointing or the person, you know, the, 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 the means by which the Holy Spirit, the same Holy Spirit, come upon us as individual to empower us in order to serve the interest of God. Hear me again, to serve God effectively, to do his bidding, to do his work, to be fruitful, to win others to Christ, to model Jesus, to disciple people, you need the unction. For instance, I am teaching you now. It takes the anointing to teach. It takes the anointing for me to read the Bible, not just for myself, to, teach, to see things as a fellow Christian that I may grow in the Lord. 
But beyond that, God anointed me to see the scripture better than many of you so that I can teach well. Now, I must be conscious of the Father. It's not because I'm better. And that's why when I teach, I myself must go back to listen to the same message as a Christian. Let me say it again. I am teaching now under the unction of the Spirit as a teacher, as a Christian anointed to teach the body. When I finish, I must go and listen to the same message as a fellow Christian listening to the message the anointed one taught. So my teaching now is under as a servant of Christ. When I leave this pulpit, I'm going to relate with you guys as fellow Christians. That's why Paul told Timothy in 1 Timothy 4.12, he said, be the example of the believer. Don't just be a professional preacher anointed to preach. When you are finished preaching, live as a Christian. Be conscious of the anointing within you. Let there be a balance. So, it is possible then to be anointed and you live carelessly. You are anointed, you are moving the spirit, God is using you, but by the time we look at your personal life as a Christian, see, you are not really a good example. And for me, that's a betrayer of trust. We are Christian primarily, all of us. Some of us are anointed to sing. Thank God for your life. When you leave that ministration, you must still be a Christian. You see a lot of music ministers. You look at their personal life. You wonder. There is no coherency. The things are not coherent. Your life doesn't mirror what we see. You are not walking the talk. Thank God for the music. You know, you know Satan was anointed. He was the anointed cherub. But look at his life. Look at, look at his ambition. He was not in harmony, in sync for this, with the same anointing. And so you must get that balance. Okay, so we are talking of anointing to serve in one capacity or the other. And every one of us as believers, God doesn't have bench warmers in his house. Nobody must be idle in God's house. All of us. Now look at it. First Peter and chapter 5. All of us. Every believer. Everyone. If you are not working in God's house in one capacity or the other, you are not being fruitful and useful in the body. Let me tell you this. You are only squandering the grace of God and you will be judged. This is a serious work. It's a different thing if you are not born again. See, you had better not be born again and leave Jesus alone. If you are saved, if you said you are born again, Jesus has saved you for himself. 2 Corinthians 5, 15. In that he died for all, he died that those who henceforth live, they are no more living for themselves, but unto him who died and rose for them. God saved you for himself. God saved you for himself to, to, you know, to conform to the image of his son, you understand, and to live for him, to advance his cause. I am doing my own, you must do yours, all of us. Nobody must be fruitless in the house of our God. Okay, look at it, 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 8. Where is it now? Okay, yeah, that's it. Verse 10. As every man, every man, every man, every Christian, 1 Corinthians 4, 10, every has received the gift. All of us, we have received the gift. Even so, minister, serve the same one to another. Minister the same. Some of us are called into music. Some of us are called into, you know, into mercy. You know, you show mercy. You are given to hospitality. You know how to take care of people. Some of us are called into counseling. Some of us are called into writing. Some of us, you know, some of us, you are, your own is more of energetic work. Some of us, you are called into giving. You, you have that grace to give. And that's why God will grace you to make more money than others. What you touch, turn to gold. Even though all of us are called to do the same, but on a special note, all of us have these specialized graces. So look at what he said. Even so, use the same to minister one to another as good steward. You see it? Of the manifold grace, manifold abilities of God. All of us. All of us. Nobody excluded. I remember when I got born again back as a student, on, you know, when I was a medical student, Maybe that's about 30 years ago now. You know, there is nothing I did not do in the church. I served in different capacity. I started, you know, I started in evangelism unit. You know, I, in fact, by, you know, when I was on campus, by the time I was running up, a lot of my mates were calling me evangelist because I was aggressive. 
everywhere, preaching, reaching out to people, writing tracts, spending my money, you know, reaching out to my mates, people around. When I get back home, back then at Ibadan, they were just looking at me as this guy is just crazy. I was really crazy for Jesus. Now, you and I must be crazy for Jesus. You must pour the alabaster box of the oil, the perfume of your life. Pour it on Jesus. Waste your life for Jesus. You know those guys say, what is this waste? Our life must be wasted for Jesus. Until you waste your life for Jesus and you try to gain your life, you have not, you have gained nothing. People must be able to say of you, you have wasted your life. And that should be the experience of all of us if we are really doing this thing well. Okay. The Bible says we are to minister. We are to minister. So, I started ministry in that capacity. Then, I went, I joined the writer's unit in our church then. Then, I joined the intercessory unit. Then, when I remember joining this church uh, back then, uh, Holy Ghost Assembly back in Lagos. I was a cleaner. In, I cleaned. There is nothing I never did in the church. And I was growing. Then, eventually, I grew up to be one of the teachers in Sunday school. And when I was teaching, oh boy, everybody, you just want to be in my group. And I learned how to teach in the bus, in the mall in those days, you know, we could preach in buses in there. We don't have, this is not the kind of transportation system you had now. In our days, it's, it's more of mall In fact, we have little of these downfall buses. So I'll just go from uh, Idiaraba, I'll just walk across Lawansin, I get to Lawansin bus stop, I take a bus there, and I'm going to CMS. From CMS, I get to Obalende, then Obalende to Yaba. I was doing this every saturday i did it from 1990 i still remember till 1992 it was my life it was in more that god taught me how to preach it was in that that i began to see that the you know the grace of god was heavy upon my life and you know of course we didn't balance a lot of things i knew i'm going to be a preacher uh, you know of course like many other christians were so zealous we made some mistakes Okay, so this is the anointing. This is my own track record. Ask your pastor too. It will tell you his own track record. I remember knowing him back on campus. He, you know, he, he started a fellowship like that. And before that time, he was having different capacity. There is always a tra track record of service. Using your So, are you a servant in this church? Or when we say, when, once we close, we can't say, Jack Robinson, you've gone. We can't see you. All you are just here for the word. You are not here for the word. That's not what we are here for. You are here to fellowship, to mingle with other saints, to serve the living, to, living God together. You will be given work to do. It is in this that the anointing increases. If you stay idle, the anointing will be dormant. It is as we tap on the anointing that you begin to see the power of God, the wisdom of God. You begin to see the operations of the spirit of God on your life. Okay, so we're saying it that the anointing has come upon us to serve. Now let's look at it. Acts chapter one verse eight. Acts one eight, and it will amaze you that all the guys you read in Act of Apostle, you know, Act of Apostle can be said as you know, you can really look at it as Act of the Holy Ghost through the apostles, Act of the Holy Spirit through the disciples, because it's really operation of the Holy Spirit through those guys. There was nothing special in there. Peter was a fearful man. He ran. You know, when Jesus was being crucified, he denied him three times. All the apostles, all the disciples, they ran away. All of them ran for their life. But how come they did do such exploit? It's what the power of the Holy Ghost. The power of God came upon them. He drenched them and turned them to different men. It was Saul that, it was Samuel that told Saul. He said, the power of God will come upon you and you'll be turned to another man. And Saul became another man when he became the king. Okay, look at it, Acts 1 verse 8. But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. See it? So the Holy Ghost conveyed the power of God. The Holy Ghost conveyed the ability of God upon all of us. They are, and that's why you must be conscious. Okay, now look at it, verse 8. But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me. You see it? To be witness to Christ. To represent Jesus, to witness him, both in experience, in words, in action, can only be done under the power of the Spirit of God. You can never witness for Jesus in the arm of the flesh. In the arm of the flesh, it takes the power of God. And you shall minister, you know, witness to me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and in the utmost part of the earth. You're going to do it in Lagos. You're going to do it anywhere you are. See, when you move from one zone to the other, you are, see, every of our movement, location, relocation is for the master. 
You relocate from Nigeria to the US is for Jesus, is to spread Jesus. Your personal business, your academics, is just a disguise. Those are means, those are decoy that God is using to spread himself or his truth, you understand, to advance his kingdom. You must not receive the anointing in vain and you shall make me known everywhere. And the anointing, as far as today is concerned, is for us to serve in different capacity in the body of Christ. One, two, the anointing is upon you so that you can win the lost. You must be conscious of relating well with people outside in order to invite them to Jesus, in order to talk to them about Jesus. So, in actions and in words, you are being circumspect to see to it that your life doesn't negate the same doctrine that God has committed to our trust. Okay, now, because of our time, let's look at this last scripture, Luke and chapter 24. Luke 24 and 49. And I want to charge all of us. Luke 24, 29. And behold, I send you the promise of my father upon you. But tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. This is the anointing. You are endued with power. For us to get God's work done. Now, thank God we have received the Holy Ghost. The power of God is upon you at salvation. But you must be filled with him as you fellowship, as you tarry in God's presence, as you spend time in prayers, as you spend time in the word of God. You grow in the anointing, in the consciousness. The part, you'll be more conscious. You are more effective. Brethren, none of us can afford to be weaklings, to be unfruitful, to just be laid back. You are in for a serious, serious adventure. Your life counts. Eternity beckons. What God has called you for is, see, I don't know anything more noble than this noble task that God has called you, called you and I. And the anointing is here. And as you begin to yield yourself, it will amaze you how you're going to see yourself. You're growing from strength to strength. You move from one level of glory to another, one level of effectiveness. As you preach, you trust God that as the need, you pray for the sick and it will amaze you that they will be healed. The Holy Ghost is going to back you. Science and wonder is going to accompany you through you. Never think that this is just for certain. It's for all of you. The Bible says, and they went everywhere preaching and the Holy Spirit was with them. You, you know, confirming the word. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 4 tells us the Holy Spirit was with them confirming the word of God in their mouth with signs and with wonders. Hear me, it is not you but the Holy Spirit that is with you that is going to cause this to be done. You are going to blossom in wisdom. You are going to blossom in power. You are going to blossom in knowledge. You are going to blossom in effectiveness. The anointing is upon your life. The anointing is, with, is in you. The anointing is with us. It's time for us to arrive Rise by faith and make sure that the work of God is done. The body of Christ is built. More people, you know, are brought into our kingdom. They are being groomed. They are being grounded in the Lord. And all this is being done because you and I, we dare yield to the person of the Spirit of God who is taking the lead even in the work of God in our midst in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you. And so I want us to just rise on our feet. Just rise on your feet wherever you are seated. Let's begin to yield ourselves to the Spirit of God. I say, Spirit of God, I yield myself to you. I yield myself. I just want to be fruitful. I just want to go all the way. Your, your grace is upon my life. Your power is upon me. Your effectiveness is in my life. I, I will be fruitful. Many will be saved through me. Your work will prosper through my hands in the name of Jesus. I step out by faith to get your work done. I receive boldness. You know, it's the spirit of boldness. I'll be I'm bold to talk. You have given wisdom. I know how to speak. I'm among those who will speak the enemy at the gate in the name of Jesus. I will lay my hands on the sick. They will recover. I, you know, I will do it. You have shadowed me the responsibility to do it. I'm going to do it. I'll be useful. I'll be fruitful in your house in the name of Jesus. Father, I receive your grace. I receive your unction. I refused to be, you know, to be, to be, to be unfaithful. I refuse to be fruitless. The unction to function is upon your life, and you will function maximally to the glory of God, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that the will of God will prosper in your hands. We prosper in our hands. The pleasure of God will be executed through us. God will be proud of us, even as He did with those who has gone ahead of us. They labored. 
They did everything. They gave their time. They gave their resources. They 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 maximized their giftings and their all that God has and all the graces of God upon their life. All because they saw that the only thing to live for is for the master. The anointing was maximized and God was glorified. The same will be done of us in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. You will hear his voice. You will hear his instruction. And you are going to obey. You are going to be sensitive. And powerful things will be wrought through each and every one of us. If you are there today, you are here to receive Jesus. You are here today, you are here to receive Jesus. You understand? He's here to take residence on this side of you. Today is the day. you got to receive him. It's not just about acknowledging the Father, Jesus, I need you. I've come to the end of myself. I want yours in my life. Yield yourself to him. Receive him today. And it will amaze you. The beginning of a revolution that is going to take place in your life. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. Thank you for your word that we have received today. Thank you for your for your spirit that has helped us in all that we have we have learned today throughout this month spirit of god we ask that you yet prosper your works in our hand you will yet cause us to be grounded and to be rooted in all those things that pertains to christ and his pleasure lord above all i am praying that your pleasure will prosper in our hands in this church and your pleasure will prosper in our hands as individual to your glory forever in jesus name thank you father in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed.